This is a Ferrari Roma, 0-60 in 3.4 seconds, V8 turbo engine. This thing sounds phenomenal. And this is the Insta360 ONE RS. It's both an action camera and a 360 camera all rolled into one. And in this video, I'm going to show you eight cinematic and creative car shots. Hey everyone, Steve here from Learn Online Video, and today we're getting creative with cars. I'm going to show you eight cinematic car shots, and then at the end of this video, I'm going to edit all eight shots into a sequence using music, color grading, and sound effects. So let's kick things off with shot number one, the driver POV. The driver POV is a great shot because it literally puts the audience in the driver's seat. Now you can shoot this either with the action camera lens or the 360 lens, but I find the 360 lens works better because it allows you to shoot wider and capture more of the car's interior. You can of course zoom in or crop your shot to focus in more on the road if you like. Also, you don't even need to be driving for this one. You could capture a shot of you getting into the car to help set the scene. This shot would work really well at the start of a sequence. Now, you could use a head mount or a chest mount to capture this shot, but I find one of the best mounts is this gum shield mouth guard mount. It pretty much gets your camera at eye level without blocking your view when driving. As always, all gear and accessories used in this video will be linked in the description below. Okay, shot number two, the GTA. I'm calling this one the GTA because it replicates the look of a video Video game. This shot is great for capturing the back of the car and the road ahead. You could also do the same with the front of the car looking back. This is another great angle. Shoot using the 360 lens and you now have a ton of options when it comes to the edit. You could face the camera forwards, you could start with the camera pointing up and then tilt down to reveal the car. The beauty of shooting in 360 is that you can decide all of this in the edit. You can capture this shot by using a suction mount and the extension pole or the invisible selfie stick as Insta360 like to call it, the camera will then magically erase the selfie stick from your shot. Also, do not scrimp when it comes to suction cup mounts. Make sure you get one that actually sticks to your car. We don't want any accidents. I've experimented with a ton of suction mounts and some just do not work. Luckily, this thing can take a beating. This one survived, but dragging your camera and lens across the road is never ideal. Okay, shot number three, the drive over. A little bit risky this one, both for yourself and the camera. So proceed with caution. We're simply going to place our camera in the middle of the road and drive over it. Again, shoot using the 360 lens and you can adjust your framing in post. You could flip the shot as the car drives over. You could use a simple cut between the two shots or you could pan with the car as it drives over. Shot number four, the roof shot. Suction cup your camera to the roof of your car and drive. Shoot using the 360 lens and you'll be able to move the camera wherever you like in the edit. You could just keep your camera facing forwards, you could face your camera backwards, or if you drive past anything interesting, you can pan your camera in the edit for a much more interesting shot. Same with this bridge. You could just drive over this bridge with your camera facing forward. It looks okay, but now let's turn the camera as we drive over the bridge so that we can see the river much more clearly. Plenty of options with this shot, perfect for capturing both the environment and the location that your car is in. Okay, number five, the fake drone. For this, I'm going to attach my camera to a three meter long extension pole, hang it out the car window and wedge it down the side of my seat. Now, same as before, the camera will remove the extension pole. So we now have a shot that looks like a drone is following the car. Shoot using the 360 lens and as always, reframe your shot in post. You could hang your camera out towards the front. You could point it backwards and then turn the camera to reveal the car and the road. And you can shoot all of these shots completely solo and it looks as though you've had an entire camera crew there to help you. Okay, shot number six, the low rider. The idea with this one is to get your camera as close to the ground as possible. The closer your camera is to the ground, the faster it will look like the car is moving. You could point your camera facing forwards so that you just see the road, or you could attach it to the side so that you see part of the car, like the wheel. This creates foreground and gives your shot more depth. Also, some of these shots might look a little basic on their own, but as soon as we edit these into a sequence, you'll see just what difference they make. Bonus tip, capture audio. And by audio, I mean good sounding professional audio. The microphones on these action cameras aren't great. And when filming car shots, you're gonna get a lot of wind noise and distortion. So instead, use an external microphone to capture good quality sounds. I'm using both the Rode Wireless Go and the Zoom H1, but honestly, pretty much any wireless microphone will do. This will allow you to pretty much put your microphone anywhere. You can also help reduce wind sounds by wrapping your microphone up in a dead cat like this one here, or some sponge like this here. 
Now, putting any microphone in the engine of a car is far from ideal, but I tell you what, you do get some pretty good sounds. So do this at your own risk. Please don't go putting your microphone anywhere where it's gonna get hot or fall off. I'm gonna put mine here and hope for the best. Shot number seven, the cabin spin. This is a great shot for capturing both the driver, the car's interior, and the road ahead all in one shot. Simply attach your camera any way you can inside the car. You could clamp it to the rear view mirror, or if you've got one, do what I'm doing and suction cup it to the LCD screen like this. Again, a lot of options with this shot. You could start on the road and then turn to reveal the driver. You could turn from the driver to the road, or you could start on the road, pan, and do a full cabin spin, revealing the driver, the car's interior, passenger if you have one, and then back to the road. The choice is yours. Okay, shot number eight, Tiny Planet. Now, although this shot isn't particularly cinematic, it's more creative, I still wanted to put it on the list because it's so easy to achieve. In fact, if you've already shot either the fake drone shot or the GTA, then you already have the footage because it's exactly the same. Shoot using the extension pole, and then in the edit, simply zoom out. Again, not super cinematic, but could be used as the intro to your film. You could add some text or a title to set the scene for your short film or video. So there you have it, that is how you shoot all eight shots. But what would all this footage look like edited into a sequence with music, color grading, and sound effects? Let's find out. There you have it, that is what all eight shots look like edited into a sequence. If you found this video useful, do let me know, give it the old thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this, learn more about video production, filmmaking, how to film cars, then I have a ton more content on this channel. Be sure to check it out. But that's it from me. I've gotta go drop this Ferrari back. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.